Affairs, Professor Emily De Cruz, Gender and Development Person of ESETU, colleagues from various state universities and colleges, as well as from the ESETU system, esteemed resource speakers, good morning. It is nice to see all of your faces on Zoom today, and even if we are all away from each other, physically and in spite of current unprecedented situation that we are in, we find ways to be able to collaborate and make sure that quality instructional delivery finds its way towards our students. And the odds towards instructional delivery in the new normal are like mountains that we all together, hand in hand, are trying to climb and conquer. We have attended various webinars on flexible learning modalities in the past weeks. But today, however, Iloilo Science and Technology University is bringing you a webinar on empowering oneself to our embrace the new normal. It is imperative that we take care of our physical health, but note that our mental health is equally important, which begs the question, how do we empower ourselves during this new reality that we all have pushed into? How can we make things better for ourselves and for everyone? Today, our esteemed resource speakers will give us insights into ourselves about gender and development and how we conquer our own seemingly unfounded fears, our real worries and anxieties, and turn us into the window of understanding self better. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to read to you our house rules. Everyone is advised to mute their device microphones as well as hide their videos so that we may maximize the bandwidth for this webinar. You may turn on your videos later during the open forum. Also, note that your questions will be addressed in the open forum. So during the webinar, let us give our full attention to our resource speakers. For the open forum, you may use a and We'll acknowledge you later on. The moderator will be on to read all the questions for our resource speakers to answer. Also, we are reminding you to change your Zoom account name into your real name so it is easier for us to send you a digital certificate. Also, please be reminded to abide by proper decorum during the webinar. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let us start the webinar with a prayer to be led by the Director of Internal Audit Services of ESETU, Ms. Mary Jean B. Nobleza. Let us bow down our heads and feel the presence of the Lord. Let us pray. Our mighty and loving God, we acknowledge your holy presence in us today. We thank you. We are alive and healthy. You are our infinite source of peace, love, and wisdom. Your Holy Spirit guides and directs us. Your love includes us and your life illuminates us. Be with us as we start our webinar on improving ourselves embracing the new norm. Lord, we come to you our resource for you. Thank you for the shared knowledge and psychological support and well-being and appreciative resilience in times of crisis. We believe in times because it is in one hand, particularly in the time of responding to the pandemic of COVID-19, we come and strength. It is not easy for us to live in the state of physical distancing. We cannot offer an embrace comfort, shake hand to get a pat on shoulder to encourage. 
to keep ourselves and us safe. Of Lord, we able to hug and kiss our elderly seniors because we need to be safe. Give us strength, love, and grace to seek new ways of loving each other, even a deep distance. We remember our medical professionals, our frontliners, our government, our health sectors, agencies, and NGOs, and individuals to continue to serve for our health. Give them the strength to continue when things are hard. Strong their families and keep safe. Stand for those who are test positive of COVID 19. Give them hope and peace to know that we are not alone in this struggle, for you are with us. Lord, calm our anxieties, comfort us in our distresses, assure us with your love and compassion. Lord, we thank you for continuing to shower your peace and blessings in vision, missions, and goals. Bless our officials, staff, faculty, and students, and all our stakeholders. Bless our participants and guests. Thank you for their time and give poisoning. Thank you for everyone who has made this webinar possible. Enlighten us with your wisdom. Empower us with the Holy Spirit in the new month. Teach us always to to you and to your word, especially in this time of crisis. Give us all this to persevere and let our courage never fail. All this we must and pray in the, in the mighty name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Thank you very much, Mom Noblesa. So, dear friends, at this juncture, let us listen to the opening remarks by the ISATU University President, Dr. Raul F. Puyong. Good morning to everyone. I would like to welcome our participants to this webinar organized by the University Gender Development Office. The webinar title Empowering Oneself Toward Embracing New Normal. We are fortunate this morning that we have invited two professors from UP Dilim. Our speakers, Mr. Pena Fleur and Dr. Chaplin, properly those also, I would like to talk our regional director of the Commission on Higher Education, Dr. Mark Stone, and education vice of Chair, Dr. Nanny Tito. Especially, I should welcome the president of Imara State College, Dr. Roger Artao. Also with us this morning are participants from Health College, different process. University, Penn State University, Louis State Campus, Arnaldo Integrated School in Cavis, Colossi National High School, and other from the Department of Education. Also, welcome the participants from the ISATU campuses. Campus, the Megal Campus, Barocatuebo Campus, Angas Campus, and the Yon Campus. I know uh, not all of them were able to visit. The first, we have set up a wide screen and participate. So, this is to prepare. That through this webinar, we will be able to manage effectively our in new normal. So, I'd like to encourage all of you to make the best out of this webinar. Participate to me after the university. And God bless. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Dr. Muyong, for taking the lead in making this well. Friends, it's with pride that I introduce you, Regional Director of the Commission on Higher Education for Region 6. To give her message, please welcome from Maura Consolacion Di Cristobal. A pleasant morning to all. Um, Ma'am Nenny, our God Focal, and I would like to share the message which we shared last uh, June 3 to all SSC community colleges who attended our seminar on mental resilience. Allow me to share screen, please. May I be allowed to share a screen? Okay, I would like to share uh, the same slides which I shared last May night on Meta Resilience Amid the Pandemic or Private Chinese and June 8th or local community colleges. So, since not all of you attended that, uh, given the same team more or less, I would like to share the same message. So with uh, coronavirus, we were all asked to flatten the curve. So to some had this oikophobia, they would not like to stay at home. Of course, uh, there are also advantages of staying at home. And uh, we will not dwell much on that, but we will dwell more on the other side. So, with, with the coronavirus, we heard a lot, no graduation, no vaccine, no classes, flexible learning, uh, stranded students, and the like. Then, we heard a lot about loss of jobs, uh, economic recession, no work, no pay, no work from home arrangement, no means of transportation, Difficulty in going to work for those who are going to work. No food on the table. We heard about quarantine, the lockdown, ECQ, MEGCQ, DCQ, MGCQ. So, a lot of this, a lot of this, and the news. Napapuraning na tayo sa news, like uh, there's this survey that 90% of Pinoy's are worried about catching COVID. Then we hear a lot about death of uh, health workers. Kung sila kaya nilang mamatay, paano na lang tayo na ordinaryong tao? We hear about death of people we know. We heard about PUM, PUI, suspect, probable, increase, increasing confirmed cases. So, ano po ang nagiging epekto nito sa atin? Magkakaroon tayo ng anxiety. So, on a large scale, Ano po pang epekto nito aside from having this anxiety? Yung iba, anxiety because they are not, uh, they could not be, they, could, they are not allowed to go out. But if we look at the God side of it, reports would say that eight are raped daily by the PNP. And we saw an increasing number of child pornography cases. during the quarantine. So, bakit ikot po tayo, domestic violence, paikot-ikot tayo, physical abuse, sexual abuse, psychological, economic, and emotional. So, we have to consider, sa mga isudyante natin, ilan kaya dito ang affected dito ng domestic violence. Even among us teachers, sino kaya ang nakakaranas dito ng mga abuses na ganito? Then, the news also will give us are the question of are we ready for the new normal? Will there still be a bright future for each one of us, or or will the future be bleak? Nag overthinking na po tayo. I know this happens even for us adults. I know of two people, very uh, 
intelligent people, pero po overstress sila dito sa nangyayari. They could not actually work properly now. They could not even sleep properly because of what is happening. Nag overthinking na po. Then so one goes from the PTSD, stress, OCD, depression, fear, and oppression, phobia, hopelessness, insomnia, doubt, panic, lethargy. Ano na po, it's a cycle na ina-undergo ng bawat isa sa atin. Pero, of course, iba-iba naman po yung pag-handle natin, pero paano na lang yung ating mga edyante. So, the institution, our main clients are the students. So, there is this... Hotline, according to this newspaper, mental health hotline calls, dati 80 lang monthly, now becoming 400. So, bakit po nag increase Kasi marami po talagang hindi kinakaya ang mga pangyayari sa nangyayari ngayon sa atin. Increasing number of suicide rates. We know for a fact in Region 6, third po ang rank ng uh, Region 6 pagdating sa suicide rate. So, ang mga sadyante natin, they undergo what they call teenage emotions. So, amidst this, nasaan po kaya ang school? Nasaan? How could the school help their students? Ito po, tignan natin. Inahanap ng sadyante natin yung ating nasaan si president, nasaan si guidance counselor, nasaan na ating medical doctor, nasaan si registrar, nasaan si teacher, nasaan si nurse. And how could school heads help their staff and teachers? Sa panahon pong ito, hindi lang po ang sudyante ang apektado, lahat po apektado. Pero uh, we're glad that Isa you came up with this gender perspective and psychosocial support and well-being and appreciative resilience in of crisis. Considering the number of depression rate in the state, hotline po na inihingi namin, hindi lang hotline na ang naka, no, ay si guidance counselor lang. Minsan po ang sadyante natin pwedeng hindi, na niya, hindi siya makatulog, iisip niya baka COVID positive siya. O si sudyante natin hindi makatulog dahil niisip niya, ano na kaya yung future ko? Paano na ang klase ko? O si teacher ko, binigyan na kaya ako ng grade? These are simple reasons, pero it affects uh, the normal condition of our students. In fact, I we were just informed yesterday, meron na naman po nag-suicide sa Region 6 kahapon. So these are things that we have to consider. So, uh, you're fortunate, uh, your president, Dr. Muyong, uh, scheduled this together with uh, Professor MD to have this kind of activity. I pray, or oh, we pray, that the other school heads who are here, the campus directors, the president, uh, President Artaho is present. Um, maybe they could also have their own in their own school. At saka yung po yung pinaka ano namin, we are praying that we could have a hotline Pinapaiding sagutin ni nurse, pwedeng sagutin ni guidance counselor. So, on behalf of CHED Region 6, uh, ituloy-tuloy lang po natin ang mga ganitong klaseng activities. Kasi palagi pong iniisip natin, ano lang ang pwedeng matutunan ng bata. Nakakalamutan po natin, there are other sides sa buhay ng ating mga estudyante. In fact, kay, kay teacher po, baka si teacher po, hindi na rin ano ang kanyang uh, mental health. Kailangan na rin niya ng tulong. So, thank you. Once again, uh, is that you for spearheading for spearhead this kind of activity. activity. On behalf of Chedris, pleasant morning to you po. Thank you very much, Dr. Cristobal. Indeed, there are a lot of challenges that we are facing during this pandemic. This webinar aims to remind us all that mental health is equally important as physical health. And today, we are hoping to learn more to empower ourselves so we may in turn empower our students also. So thank you once again, Dr. Crisobal. Now it is with pleasure that I introduce to all of you our first esteemed resource speaker who will talk about 
gender, perspective, and psychosocial support and well-being as our first time for the webinar this morning. He is a social worker by profession and a gender trainer and advocate. She's a graduate of bachelor's degree and master's degree in social work from the University of the Philippines, Diliman, and is currently a candidate for a doctor of professional studies in the University of Southern Queensland, Australia. She engages in local and international conferences and projects on social work and gender and development issues. She is the immediate past Secretary General of the Asian Association of Women's Studies. Currently, she is serving the UP Open University as a Faculty of Social Work and Women and Development Program. Friends, please all welcome Professor Finaflor F. Thailand. Hi, thank you, Ma'am Jessa, for the uh, uh, warm introduction. I can be heard, no? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Sige. Um, thank you for this invitation from our colleagues uh, in the State University from Iloilo. Maraming salamat. This is a great opportunity for us, not just to share experiences, but more importantly, to be with each other, no? Uh, as what our uh, previous speakers mentioned, yung ating uh, university president and our chair regional director, it's very important for us to really have somebody, uh, maybe part of our family or apart from our family, who are willing to share with us and listen to us and just be there no, whenever the need arises. So that's basically the point of my discussion for this after, uh, for this morning, sorry. And hopefully I could be able to... Um, share my experiences also and my observations in relation to gender uh, and development and how this can be uh, integrated in providing psychosocial support and uh, towards well-being and empowerment, just like the title of our um, webinar for this morning. Okay. So first and foremost, I would just like to share with you the, the well-being model that I'm advocating for and that I believe uh, is very much um, appropriate for us, especially not, not just for our, the pandemic, but for our everyday life and even for the new normal as what we have been mentioning ever since we are in this pandemic, we are, have been anticipating the new normal. So this uh, well-being model, as you could see, is actually an integrative approach. No? Uh, we would like to see the integrativeness, the interrelationship of the person, of the various groups that person is in, and the community and the larger society that the person, uh, person is in. So these uh, three layers, micro, meso, and macro levels are very much interrelated. Whatever happens to the person is, uh, very much affects his or her family or peers and the larger community that he or she belongs to. And even uh, vice versa, the community and the groups affect very much the well-being of the person. And we also believe the, uh, that the various aspects of life and living of uh, a person is also very important. We, just like uh, we have been mentioning a while ago, uh, we just do not just focus on the physical aspect, but also the relationships in terms of the social aspect, the economic, the political uh, aspect, we're not talking about uh, the leaders, not just the leaders, but how uh, decisions are made and how, how this affects the well-being of people and also the spiritual aspect, not just uh, focus on the uh, beliefs of people, pero kasama din naman yun, pero yung, uh, the more important thing is our sense of purpose and meaning and san tayo humuhugot ng motivation and hope amidst all these uh, considerations. So given that, I would just like to share with you first uh, dun sa micro aspect dun sa person, this is a uh, uh, five tip um, article which was we published or which we posted in our UPOU website, UP Open University website, where I was asked to give uh, simple tips on how we could actually um, uh, achieve mental health. So una, because we our lives did not stop, although we were forced to pause a bit. Uh, sa mga estudyante, ganun din. Sa mga teachers na katulad ko, sa mga nag-aaral, no? may mga kailangan tayong ma-accomplish. <clears throat> so, what I mentioned here is we need to accomplish what we can. No? Within the capacities and limits, we need to uh, make assessment, uh, identify ano ba yung kaya ko, ano yung pwedeng magawa. So, the achievable, yung mas realistic. 
And uh, some uh, frustrations are drawn from our high expectations of ourselves. So sa mga teachers din, maaaring ang mga frustrations and disappointments natin are the expect our expectations from our students, from the environment also. So we may need to manage these expectations. And uh, we need to forgive ourselves for our shortcomings and understand na meron pang bukas na hindi naman kailangan matapos lahat ng ito, lahat ngayon, for today, because there will still be tomorrow. So we need just to accomplish what we can based on our capacities and limits. It's also very important for us to actually have constant communication with our uh, with our uh, support groups. This, this can be your family, our friends, our teachers. Magandang binabanggit ni Ched Regional Director Ma'am Kanina. No, it's important that our school environment also would be able to provide us with a support system. No? Pwedeng mag, uh, mag-create ng mga support system, support group who can be trained kung walang uh, masyadong maraming trained na uh, providers ng psychosocial support or psychological first aid. Uh, masaya tayo na maraming so, uh, volunteer groups around na pwedeng magbigay ng uh, tele or remote um, uh, counseling or psychosocial first aid. So we, we need to grab that opportunity. Importante din na naliling tayo sa isa't isa. No? We, we have been locked down in our house physically, pero dapat by heart, socially, hindi tayo physically dista uh, uh, hindi tayo distant sa isa't isa. Meron din mga iba, nakukuha nila yung motivation nilang from their pets, no? from their plants. No? Uh, alam na alam kaya, mahilig din ako sa plants. So, we need to maximize these opportunities for us to have constant communication with our support groups. And then, yeah, taking care of ourselves. I always tell this to our consults because I'm a volunteer providing um, psychosocial support then via remote, no? Uh, sa Facebook uh, account ko, sa, sa cell phone, mobile phone, sa email, Google Meet, Google Hangout, eh, kahit saan pwede na may, um, pwede nilang ma-access. Sige kong binabanggit, importante, parehin yung physical health within the spectrum of mental health because we are not able to decide from prop of the there special out of Tell them also as let's alala sila sa kanilang mental health, sa kanilang physical health. Ano yung basis for your anxiety about your physical health? Lumabas ka ba? Have you had contact with them with a positive or PUI? Were you eating a lot? What are your symptoms? Kung meron, so you just give back to them yung pag-aalang nila so that they could also realize na hindi naman pala din ganon ka may basis yung akin pag-aalala. So I just have to. Listen to the experts and uh, listen to my body more. No? Um, ma marami kasi mga bagay na sa heads natin. And, and hindi natin sisisihin yun. Kasi ako nga, I've been thinking a lot also, lalo na nung simula, kung may sakit nga ba ako and all, konting ubo, sipon, paggising, mag-aalala ka na. So yung usual na physical health uh, exercises, mga pag-aalala sa sarili, yung proper diet, it really helps us. And then, uh, we need to spend time more time with people and activities na sa tingin natin will give us calmness and uh, peace. No? Kung sa tingin natin ay hindi nakakatulong ang laging pagbababad sa panonood ng news, gaya ng binanggit ni Ma'am kanina, ang daming lumalabas sa mga balita, we, we just need perhaps to schedule our um, TV uh, watching, news watching. Uh, ako, na binawasan ko yan dati nung nagsimula ang pandemic, Nakababad ako the whole day just for me to focus talaga kung ano nangyayari yung updates. Pero hindi eh, hindi siya nakakatulong. Marami ring miscommunications na gaganap along the way in the process. So I just have to choose and prioritize ang ba talaga ang importante. So I realize that I just need to watch the news twice a day. So morning, para lang malaman ko anong nangyayari habang tulog ako. And then in the evening, uh, yung mga news uh, ano natin in the evening para... I know what to do prior to sleeping. Something like that. So, so yun, yung ganun. Tapos kung hindi talaga nakakulong at all, 
bawasan talaga. So, just have to set and identify which people, things, activities uh, ang hindi nakakapagbigay sa atin na uh, um, calmness na naka na kailangan. Pwede rin manood ang ating ay makakapagpap uh, and just go to your favorite spot of the house. Uh, Amoy-amoyin ang mga cactus na meron sa bahay, ang mga plants, ang mga pets makapaglaro sa mga anak. Anything that you could uh, draw your strength and your calmness and your peace. And then, last for this uh, part, I gusto kong malaman at gusto nating ipaalam din sa mga tao na we are not alone, although we are physically distant. We need to remind ourselves that we are not alone if you are alone in your born house know that the other people out there some out there are uh, can be raised nag um, uh, nag chat sa akin sa Facebook ganyan ang mga kabataan ngayon chat na lang ayaw nilang tinatawagan sila <laughs> wala lang mga problema so I just opened the opportunity sa Facebook chat uh, hindi siya nagsabi ng concerns niya, ng problem, ng anxiety, pero gusto lang niya ma-secure na, uh, ma'am, so pwede po kayo na matawagan just in case any of us here in the boarding house who have uh, locked out in our boarding houses, na pwede po kami may matawagan just in case matawagan nila, is this for free? Hindi po ba to scam? <laughs> Sabi ko, hindi. You can check my profile. You can check my uh, profile in the internet para lang makasigurado ka at secure ka na ang tao makakausap mo ay ako at meron na makakayahan to manage your situation. So sila, masaya na sila just knowing na merong tao na pwedeng umalali sa kanila just in case. No? They're secured enough. And I never uh, heard again from these people. Ibig lang sabihin nito, minsan hindi naman natin kailangan talagang makipag-usap. No? Minsan kailangan lang nating makasigurado na merong pwedeng makausap tayo just in case we, have, uh, uh, we saw the need na. Meron din mga pagkakataon din naman na mas malakas tayo sa iba, mas malakas yung ating resilience kaysa sa iba, at baka tayo din ay pwedeng makapag-provide ng support sa mga ibang hindi naman uh, ah, nahihirapan dito sa ganitong sitwasyon. So, mamaya mag-uusapan natin more about this. So, that's for the mic part. And then, of course, we need to uh, integrate the gender uh, uh, perspective here in everything that we do because gender is a cross-cutting theme in everything that we do, especially in the university. No? We need to remind ourselves that gender rights are human rights. No? Very uh, briefly lang, syempre, pag sinabi ng human rights, this, this is for all. This, is, uh, this needs to be uh, upheld and respected and facilitated and promoted just, be, just simply because of our humanity. No? Isang mabilis lang nang siyempre kaya human rights karapatan mula sa salitang of na dapat sabihin ito ay dapat para sa lahat para mas buo at maging isang tunay na tao. So just because uh, uh, given our humanity we are entitled for this. And of course uh, isang ano lang uh, part ng human rights perspective ay yung uh, 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 level and state accountability ng ating duty bearers which in our in, uh, constitution ang nakalagay doon ng major and primary duty bearer ay ang state or ang government. So they should be the ones to be really providing or leading the provision of opportunities and resources and capacities so that people's human rights are uh, respected and promoted. These are universal and for all. Okay. So, gaya na nabanggit ni Ma'am kanina, maraming context ng gender dito sa COVID-19. Kailangan lang natin rin remind na uh, may mga kanya-kanya tayong vulnerabilities. No? Uh, hindi tayo pantay-pantay even if the human rights would like to have such. Yun yung ideal situation. But we are not in an ideal situation. Bago pa man dumating ang pandemic, hindi na tayo pantay-pantay. No? We are in an equal status. Uh, well, maganda nga sana, pantay-pantay tayo. Pero sabi nga nung mga nababasa rin natin mga articles and uh, memes sa Facebook, sa ibang mga uh, journals, we are not uh, in the same boat. No? We are under the same storm but we are riding on a different boats. Some are riding sa bangkang papel, konting pitik lang ng waves ng pandemic, patay agad. Meron namang naka-cruise ship, kahit anong mangyari, hayahay ang buhay. So, hindi tayo pantay-pantay. So, sa gender, ganun din. 
no? Lahat tayo apektado ng pandemic pero yung impact nito sa atin magkakaiba. May varying degrees tayo ng effects. So sa mga kababaihan, very important na ma-realize lang nating lahat na maraming pagkakataon na mas hirap talaga ang mga babae sa mga ganiting sitwasyon lalo na sa uh, pandemic because vulnerabilities are magnified during crisis. So yung mga school lockdowns, uh, work from home arrangement, economic insecurity, lahat yan medyo mas maraming sumasalunan babae. Babaeng membro ng bahay, nanay, kapatid na babae. Uh, meron nga uh, tayong basa ng journal article na uh, simula nung pandemic, maba or halos walang nagsasubmit ng journal articles or publication mula sa mga babae. No? Because yun nga, yung impact ng uh, pandemic, maraming mas sumalo doon ay mga babae. No? Yung, yung pag-aalaga nila sa bahay, sa mga anak na nasa bahay, nag kailangan turuan ang mga anak. Uh, because nagpatuloy ang pag-aaral through remote learning. So mas marami doon babae ang sumalo. Even those in the frontliners, mas marami din doon mga babae. Nakaraniwan din naman, nanay sila. Um, sila ang caregiver sa bahay. No, so, maraming mas sumalo doon ay mga babae. Tapos, uh, gaya nang nabanggit ni ma'am about domestic violence, may date ang binabanggit si ma'am, very good po yun. No? Kaya lang, malungkot tayo, hindi tayo masaya na may naririnig tayong reports. Pero at a certain degree, masaya na rin tayo kasi may nare-report. I mean, may... Uh, sa lockdowns kasi, quarantine, hindi ka pwedeng lumabas. No? Meron ako natawa, merong tumawag sa akin last time, pa, uh, namang problema siya, paano mag-re-report, uh, eh hinaharang sila sa checkpoints. Hindi priority ang pag-re-report ng uh, abuses. No? So, mamaya magbibigay ako ng uh, mga ilang recommendations paano gawin yun. At yun nga, we may be locked in with our abusers at ma, uh, ma, mas masakit marinig ito. No? I could just imagine gano'ng kahirap na hindi ka masyadong makasigaw, hindi ka makalabas for help. Even if prior, meron naman tayong uh, mechanism supposed to be for reporting kaya lang dahil nga sa pandemic uh, nagkaroon ng prioritization na dapat ito lang yung uh, mas, mas naging focus I mean, sa pag-resolve, pag-manage na uh, effects ng pandemic. Pero isa to sa effects ng pandemic, and this is a legitimate effect and implication of the pandemic. So, this should be part of the whole management system ng pandemic. Kasi hindi naman nawala ang vulnerability ng mga dis uh, may disability, solo parents, single-headed households, etc. No? So, dapat kasama pa rin sila sa, uh, ano, sa management system do sa ating mga programs. And even yung mga usual life saving and women's programs, kanyari yung reproductive health, yung pagpapacheck sa uh, pinagbubuntis. Marami tayo naririnig mula sa mga colleagues natin from UNFPA, United Nations Populations Fund, na biglang nag-spike ang unplanned pregnancies ngayon. So, um, Ma mahirap yan kasi may problema na tayo prior to that. Pangalawa, sino ba ang mga uh, vulnerable sectors patungkol sa pagbunti? So marami na tayong kaso prior to the pandemic ng teenage uh, pregnancies. So ayaw na sana natin na yun yung uh, characteristic na mga buntis pero hindi malayong mangyari yan. Kasi prior to the pandemic, ganun na yung nangyari. And then of course, yung binabanggit nating mga rape cases na I know you know what I'm saying. No? So, uh, ang hirap na may ganun tayong gender context ng pandemic, pero yun yung realidad. Mahirap lunukin, pero yun ang realidad. Kaya kailangan silang gawin ng paraan. So, given na yung model natin kanin, nagbigay ako about self na mga tips, bigyan din natin na mas malawak na mga uh, provision ng support and assistance patungkol pandemic at the meso level and macro level. Because ECQ protocols are more generic, hindi na po provide ng mas inclusive at nagko-cover ng mga varying needs and vulnerable ng mga tao. So ito yung mga gusto natin i-add. Uh, gusto sana natin na uh, matingnan yung mga nasa under informal sector na uh, mula sa datos natin ay eh, mas marami ang babae. No? Marami tayong narinig yan, may problema tayo sa economics. Uh, maraming nag pinagbukas na na ekonomiya pero wala doon sa picture ang ating mga informal sector. So, kailangan siguro pag-isipan, i-assess ano yung pwede nating ma-provide na system of support para sa mga ganitong tao. And then, ito yung binabanggit ni Ma'am kanina, no, na sana may hotline. Yes, uh, I, I was, I, I, I really wanted na, no, sana, no, no. Uh, tapos, um, Supposed to be yung online harassment din ngayon ay mas lumaga. Ang daming mga 
um, dubious and scrupulous and mga mas na mga uh, groups ngayon, pages, no? nakaka-irita <laughs> at nakakainis and uh, syempre lalong lumala dati na meron na yun, pero lalo lang lumala. And then, yung power struggle sa mga quarantine, meron ding mga tayong naririnig na sex for pass, sex for quarantine pass, mga pamalit uh, para sa para mapadaan. So, these are these are aggregating factors for our uh, situations. So, uh, of course, as individuals, we have to uh, have to increase our self-awareness. No, we have to know what's happening, and we have to know our rights as individuals. No, uh, at kailangan din natin matulungan ng iba because we, this pandemic should really help us to become to have a more strengthened solidarity among ourselves, no, among among neighborhoods, among uh, classmates, among teachers, no, uh, within the university. So, gusto natin na matulungan ng isa't isa, hindi lang ang ating sarili. No? And of course, we have to understand kung ano yung mga existing laws and yung mga uh, nababago-bago mga guidelines so that we could be um, uh, guided properly. And then, uh, kapag may nalaman tayo na sa tingin natin, ay kailangan i-report report natin. Later on, I will be flashing some uh, hotlines and some ways on how we could help in reporting. No? Uh, we need to know the new rules, the new laws, the protocols, no? And various LGUs magkakaibayan. So kapag lumilipat ka sa mga various LG, sa varying LGU para pumunta sa trabaho, kailangan nating malaman kung anong mga yon. Makakatulong kung merong summary uh, na mga protocols na ito para mas maintindihan ng maayos at sana nga yung language na gagamitin ay mas maintindihan. At kung may kakayahan tayo, we need to volunteer ourselves so that we could help others. No? Ito yung panahon na hinihingi talaga tayo na makialam sa iba. Uh, pwede naman natin gamitin ito yung ating mga online technologies. Gaya ng binanggit ko kanina, may existing tayong mga structures for God and for uh, anti-vowsy sa mga bawat barangay, sa bawat LGU. So kailangan... Uh, palakasin uli iyon, kailangang buhayin sila kung medyo natutulog, uh, kailangang ibalik yung functionality nila at palakasin pa. Uh, kailangang mapalakas din yung dissemination ng mga uh, laws patungkol sa ganito mga bagay, no? uh, anti-vowsy, domestic violence, anti-rape, etc., sexual harassment, because hindi naman na-suspend ang mga existing laws because of the pandemic. At hindi rin naman na-suspend ang mga crimes. It became an opportunity pa nga for people to commit crimes. So that's what we wanted to ano no to emphasize. And then yung mga previous uh, reports on God sana magamit yun para matingnan ng mga uh, implementers natin kanino ba uh, sino ba yung dapat ko na uh, focus para sa aking mga uh, uh, management ng uh, mga problema kasi merong mas vulnerable kaysa sa atin so dapat tinitinan si, saan dyan yung pregnant saan dyan yung breastfeeding ng mga household saan dyan yung dati ay nagkaroon na ng reports about uh, vowsy so yung mga ganun sino ba dyan ang child-headed household kasi ang mga parents niya ay uh, yung isa PUI yung isa ay OFW may narinig tayong news no sa Cebu for example na naiwan ang mga bata sila lang sa bahay for sure, hindi lang yon ang household na ganon. So, kailangan ma-identify yung mga yon, Kasi sobrang vulnerable nila sa mga abuses at iba pang mga crimes. And then, of course, we have existing referral pathway for uh, VOW. Pero kailangan malaman ano yung new protocols ngayon. Kasi baka nagbago tayo ng mga protocols, lalo na yung mga agencies natin in the referral pathway. Uh, kung kailangan... Uh, importante sana yung ating uh, local uh, protection, uh, local um, law enforcement systems, yung mga police barangay tayo, sana nagkakaroon sila ng random roving sa mga sa tingin nilang areas na uh, hitik sa abuses no? kasi kailangan ng random check. So sa community, ito din, paulit-ulit natin ito binabanggit prior, even prior to the pandemic. Kasi ito rin yung uh, pupuntahan nating situation sa, pan, uh, sa new normal. No? Promoting gender responsive household, tamang-tama, pareho kayong nasa loob ng bahay. Maraming pagkakataon para matulungan ang mga bata na uh, maging uh, uh, gender responsive, tumulong sa bahay, uh, mabigyan ng maayos uh, na roles. No? Tapos yung pagpaprovide ng gender responsive di, di kids, lalo na para sa mga mahihirap na mga walang pambili dahil nawalan sila ng uh, hanap buhay sa so mga napkins. Uh, I understand some LGUs are also providing 
yung mga reproductive health uh, kits natin. So, importante yun. Ano? At ito yung binabanggit ni Ma'am kanina, yung distance remote psychosocial assistance system. Importante na meron tayong hotline o meron o maipalabas sa ating mga university siguro na mga hotlines or mga contact information sa saan pwede lumapit ang staff, ang mga teachers, ang mga estudyante, lalo na even our communities, partner communities natin, larger public, just in case they will be needing psychosocial support. No? Uh, maraming online uh, mga training programs para dito, pero din nag-provide na rin ang WHO na specific ways how to train yourself to to do and provide psychosocial assistance. No? At kung sakaling kakailanganin ng reporting system para sa uh, para sa um, social support, sana, uh, lalo na pag-report ng uh, domestic violence, sana makapag-provide tayo ng secret reporting code. Ginagawa na rin yan sa ibang bansa. Uh, which are accessible online 24-7 sana. Uh, yung madaling, ma, madaling ma, makapag-report ang mga tao. So these are some of the uh, reporting system na meron tayo sa Philippines. Masaya ako naglabas tayo ngayon dito sa Facebook. You can always uh, look at the Facebook page of Philippine Commission on Women and the PNP VAUC desk. So meron sila nito. Even the CHR uh, gender ombud meron sila. So yeah. So, the reporting is online also. So, ito yung binabanggit din natin isa pa, yung pag-make uh, sure lang na yung pag nagpo-provide tayo ng psychosocial support ay gen uh, may gender integration. No? We need to use na judgment judgmental attitude kasi ang hirap mag-report, ang hirap umamin na abused ka you know, in, a, in, a, in a normal situation, lalo na ngayon. So, eh, ang kailangan sa atin ay makapag-provide ng support at hindi para mag-interrogate. Let the person uh, understand na nandiyan ka to trust and believe na tama ang ginagawa, uh, tama ang ginagawa niya at niwala ka sa kanya. No. Uh, we need to present ourselves in a more caring and empathetic manner. No? Uh, ha. Sige. Uh, we need to uh, avoid uh, using uh, statements that are re-victimizing. Re like, anong suot mo nung panahong yun na ikaw ay nagkaroon ng ganitong incident? Uh, this oras ng gabi, nasa labas ka ba? Who were you with? Bakit mo kasama? Etc. So, parang ibinabalik mo sa kanila, nakasalanan nila kung sila naging ganun. So, kailangan lang ibalik yung strengths-based approach sa interviewing para mas ma-realize uh, ma nila yung kanilang strengths as uh, individuals, as women. And hindi lang ito usapin ng babae. We have heard this incident also of LGBT being targeted for uh, discrimination and gendered um, uh, uh, yung, yung, yung hindi pag-provide sa kanila ng services just because they are LGBT. So, hindi pwedeng ganoon because all of us are affected and even prior to the pandemic, marami na at matindi na ang discrimination against LGBT. No, I heard some na hindi sila kasama sa services kahit sila ang head of household. Uh, meron, uh, meron naman na iba yung trap sa kanila para sa sanction dahil nakalab na they violated protocols, no? guidelines for social distancing, ginupitan ng buhok, merong tayong ilang narinig na pinaghubad ang, uh, lalo na ang mga trans na uh, kaibigan, hindi pwede yung ganong mga sistema. No? Tapos syempre, yung mga lalaki din in general, no? men are stereotyped usually na powerful and strong and if they uh, seek for help, at napaka, ano yon parang it's a sign of weakness. At dapat tanggalin na natin yun, no? Uh, hindi uh, hindi so, sign of weakness ang pagstick ng health. It's just, uh, it's your uh, empowered ka nga because, di ba, alam mo na kailangan mo ng health and uh, alam mo kung saan ka kailangan humingi ng health. I I'm happy na may lumalapit sa akin na mga lalaki na nang sasabi na sila ay anxious sa tumataas ang level of anxiety nila. And they're also happy na may mga uh, tao na willing to give their listening ears. And because of this, this is my last slide, we need to realize that the old normal is not healthy. Because we are in this situation, ibig sabihin yung old normal ay hindi healthy at hindi natin kailangan bumalik doon. No? So we need to uh, realize na kailangan may mabago sa sitwasyon. So this is my last tip doon sa UPOU website namin. We need to count our blessings also. Mababanggit ito mamaya ni Ma'am Ems doon sa appreciative resilience. And the sun shines for a reason. And I may say, 
that our everyday waking up is always a reason for us and it's a call for us to be uh, one with ourselves it's more no para mas mapataas ating self awareness and to be with, in solidarity with others also uh, we need to uh, strengthen also our advocacy para may mabago sa mga sitwasyon natin ang hirap kasi na kung tayo lang yung mag adjust dun sa situation, ang dami kasi natin pwedeng madraw na mga problema na not within ourselves pero sa environment. So, kailangan magsama-sama sana yung mga mas nakaka-realize nito at makapag, uh, ano nga, ng mga pagbabago. And yun, integrate ng human rights as inclusive in our work, in our governance, in our development work because this will ensure well-being for all. For all women, for all genders, for men and women forever. That's it. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much, Professor Tilan, for giving us pointers on how to take care of our psychosocial self. I would like to quote Professor Tilan, we are on the same storm, but riding different boats. And this, ladies and gentlemen, causes a lot of anxieties. Balance, dear friends, is key in all our activities daily. But even if this is easier said than done, what's important is we start somewhere. We have to begin taking care of ourselves, and that time is now. And remember to always look for the silver lining in every problem that we have. So thank you once again, Professor Tailan. Shout out to all our 345 participants in Zoom right now. I'm sure that we are all learning a lot from the talk today. I just would like to remind everyone to change your Zoom account name to your real name so you could receive a digital certificate from ESATU for attending this webinar. Note that we base the attendance on your account name. So I hope that is clear to everyone. Our next equally brilliant resource speaker will give a talk on appreciative resilience in times of crisis. She is an educator, a manager, a trainer, a counselor, a pastoral worker, and a volunteer. She attained her bachelor's degree in education major in religious education from the College of the Holy Spirit, Manila. Her master's degree in theological studies was earned from the Ateneo de Manila University and her PhD in development education from the University in Santo Tomas. She's a former dean of the Graduate School of Education and Arts and Sciences of the Colegio de San Juan de Letran, Calamba. She was a research fellow of the Korea Foundation for Advanced Studies and a professor in Kyungju University, South Korea. Currently, she is an affiliate professor of the College of Public Affairs and Development of the University of the Philippines, Los Banos, and the program chair of the Diploma in Master of Social Work and Diploma in Women and Development of the University of the Philippines, Open University. At present, she is also an associate professor at the National Teacher Training Center for the Health Professions of the University of the Philippines, Manila. Colleagues in the academe, please welcome Dr. Emily D. Dicolen. Okay, uh, can you hear me? Is my audio clear? Okay, thank you very much and good morning. Thank you so much, Mom Jessa, for that uh, very generous introduction. So I'm happy that I am meeting all of you virtually today. And thank you so much for the invitation coming from ISATU. Uh, let me just uh, share my screen. Just a moment. I'm sorry. Okay. 
Can you see my screen now? Good. Okay. So, to the uh, uh, I sat you, President Dr. Raul F. Muyong, and our Chair Regional Director, Dr. Uh, Maura Consolacion Cristobal, the administration, faculty, and staff of ISATU. And I heard that we also have guests no, from the different colleges and universities. To my fellow speaker, Professor Fina Tailan, no, isa pong maganda, ano pa, mapagpalaya at virus-free na umaga sa inyong lahat. Okay? So I hope that we are all healthy and free from the virus. And I know, as mentioned by our previous speakers, now we are going through difficult times now. So I hope that this topic no, will be able to help us no, as we should face the challenges brought by COVID-19 and be able to prepare you, the administrators, the faculty, and all the staff no, of all these colleges and universities represented in this webinar. No, to prepare ourselves no, in facing or what they embracing the new normal. So topic is appreciative resilience in times of crisis. No? And we know for a fact that we go through, all of us, no? go through different crises in our life. It's just that these crises come in different phases. No? Diba sabi, ibang iba, iba, ibang mukha ng crisis no? sa buhay natin. It can be Marital crisis, especially during this pandemic. Now, have you heard na parang tumataas yata yung cases ng ating domestic violence? Imagine, during the ECQ, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, magkasama yung mag-asawa. So sometimes, no, it causes a lot of conflict. No? What else? Aside from marital crisis, no, uh, crisis sa relationship ng siblings, friends, co-workers, no? a crisis brought about by calamities such as earthquakes, uh, how do you call this? Ano pa? Uh, volcanic eruption, no? typhoons, and all that. But ladies and gentlemen, this morning, allow me to focus my discussion on the global crisis that we are going through right now, which is that of the COVID-19. And uh, as you noticed in my title, it's Appreciative Resilience. But basically, Appreciative Resilience is grounded from what we call Appreciative Inquiry. I'm sure some of you have heard about AI. Hindi po siya yung artificial intelligence, no? but appreciative inquiry. Some of you have heard of that. Or maybe for some of you, this is your first time no? to hear about AI. So basically, in my presentation, I'm going to start with a very, very short no? backgrounder on what AI is. And then later on, I will be proceeding to appreciative resilience. Now, I really commend the effort done by our university president of coming up with this webinar because you need as administrators, as teachers, and staff, I'm sure we have had for so long, for the longest time in our careers, as administrators, teachers, and staff of the academy, we already had our own frame of mind. No? But in one of the webinars that I have attended a few weeks ago, you know, the challenge now for us, all of us, is reframing. Meaning, kung ano yung nakasayan natin, ano yung paniniwala natin, ito na yung panahon na kailangan tayo mag-reframe. Because if we do not reframe, chances are tayo yung madadisappoint. Tayo yung guro, tayo yung administrators, tayo yung mga staff, no? Tayong mga officials, tayo yung mafrustrate. At sabi nga nung nabanggit kanina ng ating CHED Regional Director, baka tayo yung suffer ng anxiety. So, imbes na tayo yung makatulong, baka tayo yung kailangang tulungan. No? Do you get what I mean? So, hopefully, this uh, topic on appreciative resilience will be able to help us uh, prepare ourselves to embrace, no? Ano yun? Yung huwag na nating uh, let's not go against, no? The... Uh, how do you the effort kumbaga no tulungan natin yung mga sarili natin na ma-embrace at matanggap yung new normal na yon para hindi tayo yung magkaroon ng anxiety okay 
So therefore, no, teacher na teacher. So these are our learning outcomes, no, for this 45 minute presentation. So first of all, I would like all of you, all of you listening to me right now, to examine the relevance of AI and appreciative resilience in times of crisis such as the COVID-19, no? And then later on, I would like you to integrate the elements of appreciative resilience in your own experience as a, as a teacher, as a mother, as a father, or, or a sister, a brother, whatever context no, you're in right now. And the last, no, meron po pa yung assignment. I'm really very sorry for this. But after this session, no, I would like you to write or document your own stories. Your own stories of despair, forgiveness, and hope, no, during the COVID-19 pandemic. Okay. Malino po ba yun? Okay, so this is my outline for my uh, presentation. First, I'll be discussing about uh, the meaning or the little background of AI. Then I'll be sharing with you what AR is, or appreciative resilience, what are its elements, and what are its applications to our uh, present situation no, during this COVID pandemic. And of course, we will end with a, a summary and of course, short takeaways. So what is appreciative inquiry or what is AI? Let's begin with simple definition of terms, appreciate. No? Isn't it that when we appreciate something, it means that we put value into it, right? No? It is associated with some kind of price. No? So when we appreciate someone, no, we esteem that person, we esteem that someone, and then we, uh, we honor him, what else? It means that that person or that something is important. And therefore, sabi nila, ito, this is the definition that I love most. Very, very simple but very practical. Sabi nila, AI or appreciative inquiry is wearing that appreciative eye. No, meron akong props. No? Parang wearing that appreciative eye, isuot mo yan, ano ba ang nakikita mo pwede mong i-appreciate no? in the midst of all this crisis that we are going through right now. Yeah. So that is what we mean by appreciate. What about inquiry? Inquiry, question. No? So inquiry, on the other hand, is synonymous with discovering what is new, discovering what is better. It is the search for what is meaningful. It is the search for what gives life. Ano bang maganda? No? It's an exploration of what possibly might be, might be, ano kaya? Pagkatapos ng, ng COVID-19 na to, anong mangyayari na maganda? Okay? And inquiry also means that it is the study or the continuous process of knowing. Okay? Bawal sa AI ang sabi nila, oy bawal maging judgmental, ano ka ba? No? Hanapin mo kung ano yung maganda. Okay? That is inquiry. And so therefore, AI or appreciative inquiry is the search or it's the exploration of what gives life, what energizes, what motivates, and what inspires people and the world around us. So, in our present context, no, AI is finding what's giving us life, what inspires us, and what motivates us to work, to study, and to connect with people despite this pandemic and despite not being able to go out, no? and despite not being able to meet friends and family members face-to-face. -face. So, kung baga sinasabi natin na ang AI sa panahon ngayon ng COVID-19 ay ano yung magandang nangyayari in the midst of all this pandemic? Imagine, no? nakasama mo na ba yung mga anak mo at ang asawa mo ng 24 hours a day, 7 days a week? I heard that in Iloilo, for example, yung I mean, the, the gravity or the seriousness of the COVID-19 pandemic is not as worse as, for example, here in Laguna or in Metro Manila. But I'm sure no, you have relatives na, ano, na, na, na stranded sa Manila or yung mga na, uh, galing abroad, na stranded sa airport, yung mga ganyan, no? So, in the midst of sa kabila, yung ganon, sa kabila ng mga pangyayaring ito, anong maganda? Okay. And therefore, AI is searching for what gives life, what motivates, no? 
and what inspires us in doing something, no? something that it's just intentional. It's something deliberately or intentionally done. No? By inquiring what can be improved, what can be changed for the better, keeping in mind that what we appreciate, appreciates. I'd like to repeat that. No? The realization that what we appreciate appreciates. Meaning, what we consider, example, as beautiful is really beautiful. No? What we consider happiness is really happiness. Okay. So, AI, therefore, is what? Building on what is working and not on the problems. It focuses on the solutions, not on the, well, on, uh, not on what is problematic. So, during the pandemic, what do we have that made us survive for more than two months or three months of ECQ? Sige nga, no? You can answer this question, no? Sarili nyo lang. Sige nga, sa loob ng two months, three months na nasa ECQ or whatever pa yun, no? Ano yung magandang nangyari? Nag-realize mo ba na ay, ang babait pala ng... Mag naman pala magluang asa ko. Ay, ang galing ko pala rin magluto. Ay, nakaka-bake pala ako. No? Ay, kaya ko palang ano, mag-stay ng bahay ng mahigit tatlong buwan. No? And you know what po? No? That was one of my realizations. Ako po, ang tawag nila sa akin ay kuratsya, ang babaeng walang pahinga. <laughs> but, during the pandemic, I realized na kaya ko pala ang hindi lumabas na bahay. No? So, we may not have fully recognized, but what we have right now, no? these blessings na banggit kanina ni Ma'am Fina, these are the things that made us survive. So, come to think of it, maraming dapat i-appreciate during this pandemic. Now, of course, AI or appreciative inquiry is uh, not my own, no? but it is developed by David Cooper Ryder in the 80s. No? He believed that in every piece of art, there is beauty. Do you agree with that? No? In every piece of art, there is beauty. So, though how abstract that piece of art may be, there will always be beauty in it. So, it goes with saying that behind this pandemic, no, are the so many wonderful experiences, realizations, and discoveries about ourselves, about our families, about our relationships. No, maraming magandang nangyari. So, the search for what gives life, what inspires, what energi energizes depends so much on the way we ask questions. Di ba you should sabi natin, kung ang tanong mo ay negative, ang sagot na makukuha mo ay negative. Kunyari lang, kunyari, this is a very simple example. Gutom ka, eh, syempre sabi mo gutom siya, eh, di mararamdaman niya gutom siya. Ayaw mo, hindi pong gano'n, no? So this time, let me invite you to think about the questions that you often ask. Do the questions encourage the other person to open up? Or do these questions invite hostility? Ay, yung mga questions ninyo. Do the questions you ask lead to a free expression of feelings or isusuppress yung feelings ng ibang tao? What's the intent of asking? Is it to put the person down or in a bad light or to humiliate him? No? Do the questions that you ask encourage new ideas? Okay. Now, let me give you some examples. No? These are examples of common questions that we have read perhaps on social media or baka kayo mo nag-post ng mga ganito, no? Let's see if some of you can read this. For example, no? I don't get it. Why are people panic buying? Yeah. How will I manage my work I'm, how do I? Uh, how will I manage work from home? My internet is really poor, no? Or how will I gather my data, especially for those who are doing uh, their thesis? No, may mga graduate students po ba dito na mga teachers? Problema nyo ba ngayon ang paanong mag-data gathering? 
No? Alam niyo po sa amin sa NTTC, medyo inalang na po namin yung FGD through Zoom. O, di ba? Exciting. No? FGD through Zoom. No? Or interview through Zoom or through Skype. No? What else? Uh, what will I do with my time at home? I have nothing else to do. No, hindi mo ma-imagine, paano mo kaya gagamitin ng 24 hours a day? Pero imagine, nagamit ko pala yun. Diba? <laughs> Kala mo, ang dami mo nang nagawa, nakapaglaba, nakapagluto, naglinis, no? sort mo ni mga damit na matagal nang hindi nagagamit, no? lahat maayos. Diba? Okay. Now, these are some examples of AI questions that we can ask. For example, how can we help stop the spread of COVID-19? Diba? Think of the solution. How can you help? How can we keep physical distancing but stay connected? Sabi ni Ma'am Fina kay Nina, it should not be social distancing. It should only be physical distancing. What can I do to make myself more productive during the ACQ? How can you make use of your 24 hours a day? What alternative data gathering method can I use for my research? No, Hindi ka makapunta sa community for your data gathering. So maybe you can use Zoom or perhaps you can use other methods, right, of data uh, collection. So therefore, AI or appreciative inquiry is asking, what do I want more of, not less? Okay? What do I want to start, not to stop? What do I want to create, not to remove? What do I want to support, and not to prevent. And what do I want to reinforce, not weaken? Okay? So, yun daw dapat ang mga tanong. What do I want more of? To start, to create, to support, and to reinforce. So, in other words, in AI, we focus on what appreciates. We focus on what appreciates. So consider the following. I'm sure you have read again, no, this uh, in posted on social media or mga yung mga tawag uh, mga status ganyan. So for example, you say these are difficult times. Why can't we not say for example, these are opportune times instead of saying difficult times, no? Or you can say I'm stuck at home. But better to say, I'm safe at home, right? Or instead of saying, maintain social distancing, you can say just maintain physical distancing. Okay. So this time, there's one question that I would like you to reflect on. And what is this question? What do you want to appreciate or to grow at the time of the issue? Do you want to grow in terms of your skills and talents? No? Baka gusto dati dahil wala kang oras, hindi mo natutunang mag-ukelele. No? Like what I do now. At ah, this time, pwede ka nang mag-ukelele or baking or whatever. No? Maybe uh, during this time of the ACQ, you would like to improve on your, to grow in terms of your relationships with your siblings, with your colleagues. What else? To strengthen your connections with people. Perhaps you want to have more quiet time, no? Or more prayer time, okay? So I would like you to reflect on this question, no? After this uh, presentation. I'd like to share with you a quote, no? From Fred Rogers, an American television personality. He's also a musician, a puppeteer, a writer, a producer, and as a, a Presbyterian minister. He says, when I was a boy and I would see scary things in the news, my mother would say to me, look at the helper, uh, look for the helpers. You will always find people who are helping. Do you agree with this, Ko? Diba? Dami na dumating na bagyo, nag na, nag earthquake nag, uh, nag uh, al and all. No? There will always be people, good people and generous people. Even nowadays, no? during the COVID-19 pandemic. No? We hear pe uh, uh, people donating here and there, no? sharing whatever they have. No? Okay. So, here are three questions that I would like you to think about seriously for a few moments. First is, 
what was the best thing that ever happened to you during the ACP? Uh, by the way, no, let me invite you no, to take a screenshot no, of this slide. Because seriously, seryoso ako, no? gusto kong pag-isipan ninyo itong mga tanong na ito pagkatapos ng lecture. So, what was the best thing that ever happened to you during the time of the ECQ? How have you used your strength no? to help yourself and others during the COVID times? And what is that one small action you can take today to help make tomorrow better for you and others? So I'd like you to think about this, these questions seriously. Why? Because one methodology of appreciative inquiry, why do I want you to answer the questions? No? Because one of the methodologies of appreciative inquiry is storytelling. And if I may share with you again, a few weeks ago, I attended a webinar. No? The, the title of the webinar is uh, Reflective Writing. And one of the questions asked was, how will you tell your children and your grandchildren 20 years later no, about this COVID-19 pandemic? Ibig sabihin, pagdating ng, uh, pagdating ng 20 years, paano mo ikukwento sa iyong apo at sa mga apo ng apo mo kung anong nangyari nung COVID-19? It's a story to tell. No? So, uh, meron tayong tinatawag na appreciative storytelling. No? It means that uh, appreciative storytelling is a tool no, which helps us participants or AI advocates to tell about the positive perspective or uh, appreciative perspective of a certain story of this, katulad dito, itong pandemic na ito, or a certain organization, or a certain person. Now, we go to the second part of my presentation. So I hope AI or appreciative inquiry is clear to all of us. Now we go to appreciative resilience. What is appreciative resilience? Now, Joanne MacArthur Blair and Jeannie Cockle, no, the authors of the book, Building Resilience with Appreciative Inquiry, A Leadership Journey Through Hope, Despair and Forgiveness, gives us a clear explanation of what appreciative resilience is. Okay. You see on the slide, no, meron tayong picture of kawayan, bamboo. No? Because I believe that bamboo is a perfect imagery of resilience. No? During a storm, we see bamboos falling or uprooted, but they remain to stand firm and gradually they root themselves again. So alam sabi nila, we Filipinos are very resilient people. Imagine in one year, ang dami natin typhoons, right? From A to Z and then back to A to Z. But look at us, no? may earthquakes pa at kung ano-ano pa. Buhay pa rin tayo. So resilience, therefore, is the ability to sustain or persevere in the most complex situations and life experiences. Yung resilience is kaya natin tumayo tulad ng kawayan, muli pagkatapos ng isang pandemic na katulad dito. So appreciative uh, resilience is that which assists people in developing their own understanding and personal call to resilience by using AI principles and practices. Therefore, AI, uh, appreciative resilience is that which sustains us, that which supports us, which uh, endures and nurtures us, as hope blooms or as hope uh, flourishes, as despair visits or as despair lingers, and as forgiveness open our hearts or softens our hearts. So again, I repeat, appreciative resilience is that which sustains us, as hope blooms, as despair visits, and as forgiveness opens our hearts. So what you can see on your screen is the appreciative uh, resilience model. No? This model helps people build resilience by using appreciative inquiry, now you notice, no? to reflect on and explore the states of hope, despair, and forgiveness. Outer ring includes appreciative inquiry processes and principles. And then the inner core 
can see there the interplay of the states of elements of hope, despair, and forgiveness. So these three elements no, of hope, despair, and forgiveness are interlocked. No? They, they overlap. No? They ebb and flow through a person's experience. At times, the circle of hope will almost eclipse the circle of despair, circles of despair and forgiveness. At other times, the circles of despair and forgiveness will be the predominant elements at play in one's life. The model and its related exercises are designed to help individuals such as you and me, who else, organizational leaders such as your president, your uh, university administrators, who else, teachers, faculty, and staff, no? to reflect on and build on our, no, on our own resilience. So as I earlier mentioned, there are three elements of appreciative resilience, and these are despair, forgiveness, and hope. Now, let me begin with despair, the first element. What is despair? No? Alam ko maraming gumagamit sa atin nito when we are brokenhearted. No? In despair ako. No? Ano ba yung in despair? No? Despair you know, is characterized as the dark night of the soul. No? It's an experience where one cannot see a clear path forward, no? outcomes cannot be seen, and doubts arise. So ito yung ranasan na tipong, uh, di ba, minsan sinasabi natin, pag in despair tayo yung, di ba yan, para akong pinagsaklo ba ng langit at kupa, no? o binuhusan ng mainit na tubig, or malamig na tubig, no? ano ba yan? Wala na akong magagawa. May bukas pa ba? No? Kailan sisikat ang mga araw? O, ito kung ganun. Mga dialogue yan sa mga paborito nating Filipino movies and uh, telenovela. No? So that's despair. Now the question is, have you, I'm asking you, all of you now, have you ever gone through or is going through this stage during this pandemic, meron ba kayong pinagdadaanan na despair ngayon? No? It can be uh, feeling anxious, depression, hopelessness, ano pa, fear, and uncertainty no? during the lockdown or during the E60 or during this COVID-19 pandemic. Now, if you did or if you do right now, worry not. Huwag kayong mag-alala. Sabi nga ni Ma'am Fina kanina, there is always sunshine. No? Do not be uh, anxious. No? Be sure not alone. All of us, no? even the strongest people on earth, I'm sure have felt despair. So don't feel bad. Don't feel guilty. Now, very briefly, now let me share with you an experience of despair. Uh, alam niyo po, itong appreciative resilience na ito ay talagang buhay na buhay sa aking karanasan. Now, let me just share with you very briefly. March 18, now during, uh, we started, I and my three children started with the quarantine because apparently, yung office mate ko ng isang anak ko ay a direct exposure with a, a relative na frontliner na nag-positive and unfortunately namatay kasi doktor yung pinag niya. So immediately when we heard that news, sabi namin, ah, kailangan na nating ma-quarantine. No? So na-quarantine kami. That was March 18. And then March 14, yung anak ko po na nasa Germany kasi doon siya nag-aaral, no? sabi niya, mama, meron akong sore throat. And imagine, nakakapraning yun, no? No, knowing the symptoms of COVID-19, mama, meron mo sore throat. So, imagine, we were in a quarantine, tapos yung anak mo may sore throat, nasa malayo siya. And then, the following day, aside from the thro sore throat, nag-fever na siya. Tumaas na yung kanyang fever. So, she brought herself to the doctor for uh, COVID-19 testing. That was March 16. March 19, the doctor called her. Sabe, we would like to inform you, we are really very sorry that uh, your, uh, the result of your COVID-19 testing is positive. <gasps> Parang, grabe. No, when I heard the news from my daughter, I felt, I mean, alam mo yun yung mixed emotions na, I felt so helpless. Gusto kong pumunta ng Germany para tulungan siya, hindi ko magawa. No? 
ano pa, I was so scared to sleep during the night kasi baka mamaya pagtulog ko, hindi na siya makahinga. Uh, Nakraning na kami dito sa bahay. Early in the morning, we take our temperature. No? Nag-take kami ng vitamin C, double dosage. No? Yung ganun. No? And the, 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 the peak of my uh, uh, despair was when I asked my niece na nasa Norway, sabi ko, anak, kapag ba ang COVID positive ay namatay at kinikrimate, inuuwi ba yung kanyang ashes? Yun na yun talagang point of my despair na hala, paano yun? Pag may mangyari sa kanyang masama, sobrang nakaka-paranoid. So, what did I do? Sabi ko, I cannot stay in this level of despair. So, what did I do? Huh? May mga na-discuss si Ma'am Fina kanina, some tips no, to be able to, you know, to, to relieve anxiety. Number one, syempre prayer. Number two, naglinis ako ng bahay, no, nag, uh, nanahi ako, ano pa, I listen to music, relaxing music. Sabi ni Ma'am Fina kanina, watch uh, your, your favorite TV shows or videos or movies. Nga. First time kong nag-Netflix, natapos ko yung Crash Landing on You. I connected with my friends. Ano pa? I did a lot of breathing exercises. Ah, and the last thing is I avoided negative news online. Yun. So, um, yun po, no? Those who are listening to me right now, yun yung naging experience ko ng despair. So, I want all of you, going back to the question a while ago, na balikan ninyo, Ano yung mga experiences ninyo ng despair during this COVID-19 pandemic? Or despair in any other aspect, relationships or whatever. Now, the second element of appreciative resilience is forgiveness. What is forgiveness? No? Forgiveness in this case is that animating energy that makes forward movement possible. It is a choice to give up resentment no, sabi po dito, ah, forgiveness is a choice. No? You have to choose to forgive. No? To forgive your resentment, your anger, your fear. To be able to step forward. And accepting things as they are. Ibig sabihin, may mga bagay kasi tayong wala tayong magagawa. Tulad nga yung pandemic na ito. Gusto man natin pumasok, wala tayong magagawa. Gusto man natin magkatrabaho, wala tayong magagawa. You know? These are the things that we experience no, during these times. And therefore, we have to forgive that. No? We have to forgive things na wala naman talaga tayong magagawa. Now, again, the next question is, is there something that you, no, kayong mga nakikinig yun, no, that you need to forgive during this COVID-19 pandemic? Do we need to accept no, the things we do not have a control of? Like the spread of the virus, wala tayong magagawa. Do we continue complaining no, about ano ba yan, ang gobyerno, ano ba yan, ba yung mga tao, mga pasaway? Ano ba? The more we feel that, no, the more that we feel despair. So, wala naman tayong magagawa, but to accept them. No? Now, uh, let's stop blaming people. And sabi ko kanina, AI is, look at the solution, not the problem. So again, in continuation with my sharing a while ago, how did I forgive and what was there to forgive in my experience during this COVID-19? First, I was angry to my daughter. Bakit ako galit sa kanya? Because at that time po, they had a stutter uh, from Berlin. She's, she's based in Berlin. They had a study tour to Brussels. Nagagalit ako sa kanya kasi sabi ko, ah, naputol yung kanilang study tour kasi hindi na sila tinanggap ng mga institutions na dadalawin nila because of the COVID-19. So, nakat short yung kanilang study tour. So, sabi niya, mababalit na ako ng Berlin. Sabi ko, anak, wag kang mauna. Hintayin mo yung mga kasama mo. And she had a lot of reasons, like magtitisis pa. And also, she went back to Berlin ahead of her classmates. So, sabi ko, kung hindi siya nauna, baka hindi siya na-expose. You get what I mean? Who else? Blename ko yung mga organizers ng kanilang study tour. Sabi ko, alam naman nilang mga may COVID-19. Bakit pa sila tumuloy? They could have, you know, canceled it. ba tayo, mga school uh, administrators tayo, dapat ano tayo dyan, alert tayo dyan. Pag may mga ganyan, 
wag mo na ituloy because they are under your care. So, nag-iinis ako. Sabi ko, I wanted to to write an email, ganyan. Later on, I realized, bakit pa? Wala naman akong magagawa. So, the moment I said, I will let go of this feeling of anger, resentment, ganyan. Wala naman kasi ako magagawa. Diba? That moment, I realized na ang sarap pala ng feeling na mawala na yung blaming, mawala yan na yung galit, mawala na yung ease. Okay. So that's how I experienced forgiveness no? during the time of the pandemic. Now, let's go to the third. This is the last. No? Malapit na po akong matapos. The third element of appreciative resilience is hope. What is hope? After despair, after forgiveness, comes hope. Hope, sabi dito, is when you believe that the future will open a lot of possibilities. It's the time when you finally realize what is, what is meaning. Ano bang meron ka ngayon? Kaya nakaka-hope ka. Saan ba yung source of hope mo? Ano ba yung blessing mo? Ano ba yung sabi ni Ma'am Fina kanina? Ano ba yung mga sunrise sa buhay mo ngayong pandemic? And focus on what and focus on what what may after this to be hope years of hope. Now this is the last episode no or segment of my story. How did I experience hope? And again, while I'm sharing this story with you, I would like to again to answer the question. Ano yung mga sources of hope mo during this pandemic? No? So, to, to conclude my uh, story. So, when finally, I have decided to let go of my anger, let go of my resentment, I began to be excited, no? to feel excited about what I have. Meaning, my blessings that are making me cope no, with this situation. What were my sources of hope? Number one is Kelly's positivity, my daughter's possibility. Positivity meaning positivity. Alam nyo po, I never saw her cry. She never complained. Na every time na ako yung tatawag sa kanya, nasasabihin ko, ano ako, ano ka na, ganyan, ganyan. Sasabihin niya, ma, don't worry, I'm okay. Huwag kang mag-alala, kaya ko to. You know what? That's that, that positivity. And then, of course, my family was there. Imagine, ako at yung tatlong anak ko naka-quarantine. Sila, lahat provided yung pagkain namin, nilalagay sa pintuan namin, lahat ng kailangan namin. No? I was so blessed with my family. Friends, no? mga kaibigan na talagang who prayed for us all throughout. Who else? Yung daughter ko po, na self-quarantine lang siya, hindi naman siya na hospital. But imagine, a 23-year-old, 23 nga ba yung anak ko yan, she's 23, alone in her apartment, wala siyang relatives doon and all, but you know what, God is really good. No? Uh, I got to uh, talk to the ambassador every day no? to, to monitor her. May mga kaibigan doon, mga Filipinos, na hindi siya kakilala, pero nagdala ng pagkain, basta nilalagay lang sa, sa pintuan niya. No? And then, of course, my faith. God. No? So when I realized that these are my sources of hope, I began to feel excited about what can possibly happen after the experience. So I started getting excited about her graduation. No, she will be graduating this October. Yun nga lang ko hindi siya face to face. So na kanungkot kasi hindi ako makapunta. Pero sabi ko nga kanina, reframing ganon talaga. May internet naman, di ba? Okay. And how others will be inspired by her story. Hindi ko po alam. No? This is uh, promoting also my, my daughter's uh, story. She has been featured in uh, ABS-CBN, GMA7, Rappler, ano pa, mga blogs, mga ganyan. No? Uh, my, my daughter's name is Kelly Abagat. So if you want to listen to her story, you can just uh, Google her name and then mag appear po yung mga links na yun. So now she's been inviting, uh, I mean, uh, inspiring a lot of people. And that is hope. No, that for me is hope. Okay. So in summary, no, I would like to leave you with the following points to think about. AI is a being able to see the best of what is, that which gives life, and that what we appreciate, appreciate. No? 
it's asking questions that focuses on what we want more of to start to create and reinforce. Appreciative inquiry, on the other hand, is the practice of AI principles. It is that which sustains us as hope blooms, as despair visits, and as forgiveness opens the heart. And finally, our resilience during the time of crisis is built and strengthened through the interlocking, no? interlocking and interplay of despair, forgiveness, and hope or sometimes hope, despair, and forgiveness, or some instances, forgiveness, hope, and despair. Okay? So, my dear friends who are listening to me right now, for your takeaways, now please, please feel free to message me or email me. I really love to, I really love to hear from you because I want to document our appreciative resilience and AI stories during the COVID-19 pandemic. So, the 20 years from now, we have a story to tell no, sa ating mga apo at sa apo ng ating mga apo. Okay. So before we end, let me invite you to put your hand over your heart, like this po, no? to put your hand over your heart, take a deep breath, inhale, exhale, relax, Giving anxieties and uncertainty, uncertainties, despair, and unforgiveness more space to move through you. Repeat these phrases after me. Okay? Repeat these phrases after me. May I be kind to myself in this moment. May I accept this moment exactly as it is. May I accept myself exactly as I am in this moment. And may I give myself all the compassion I need. And how do you feel? Do you feel better? Do you feel better? Good. Okay. So, thank you so much for listening. Hope that I was able to give you something about you no, know, as we capacitate ourselves during this and as we prepare ourselves as we embrace you no know, the new normal. So I, as I earlier mentioned, please feel free to email me. You no, know, you can see my email address on the screen. Message me, you no, know, uh, through Messenger or Facebook. Please share your insights and realizations or questions to the answers. I mean, to the questions that I've given a while ago. By the way, you can repeat yung, yung the compassion break. You can repeat that on your own. No? And once again, no, before I say finally thank you, on the screen, you have their evaluation. <laughs> Ako naman po ang hihingi ng pabor because in UP system, uh, giving seminars and workshops like this is our way of sharing our expertise. And the university monitors us. No? So, Ma'am Emily, yung aking katukayo, nakasama ko pala dati sa Letran Talamba, no? will be sharing with you the link that I have forwarded to her for the evaluation of my presentation. Okay? So, thanks again and virtual hugs. <laughs> virtual hugs, no? To everyone. Thank you so much. Okay, so that ends my presentation. Thank you so much, Dr. Decolen. Thank you, ma'am, for sharing with us your knowledge on appreciative resilience and AI. This pandemic has made some, if not most of us, overthink. Anxiety slowly become a real problem for some because we forget to pause and see the brighter side of things. So thank you so much, ma'am, for reminding us that life is still beautiful and everything is a matter of perspective. Yeah. So ladies and gentlemen, the exactly. key words from Dr. DeColin's talk are appreciation and forgiveness. Let us appreciate ourselves and everyone around us and choose to forgive their imperfections and think of those as an opportunity to improve ourselves and support others in their quest to do the same. 
So that's one less baggage off our chest. Then we can focus on hope that we survive this very challenging time together. So thank you so much once again, Dr. DeColin, and see you later um, in the open forum. Okay. I hope everyone is ready for the open forum. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now request you to access the chat box, type your name and the school where you work, as well as your question. Your question will be shared on screen and I will read it for you so our resource speakers may answer it. Are there questions? We have a lot of gratitude messages here in the chat box. Are there anything, is there anything that you would like to be clarified with? Wala po ba? Clear? Clear sa hat? Are you sure? We are giving everyone one minute more. We are waiting for your answers. We have here from Mom Margie Clear. From Mom Maria Elena Villa, thank you so much to our speakers and for the good of everyone attending this webinar. Have a great day. From Sir Dojet Castronuevo, the message is very loud and clear. From Dr. Asuncion Echeverria, in this time of pandemic, acceptance is very important. From Mom Maria Cristina Abara, thank you so much, is at you and to the rest of the organizers of this webinar on God. From Mom Susan Marida Cruz, thank you so much. That is very inspiring. And from Mom Gina Belluselio, thank you so much to the speakers and the organizer. This is so informative and we have learned a lot. God bless you all. So, clear naman po talaga. Parang wala po silang questions. Doc DeColin and Professor yes, Dylan. <laughs> so, once again, thank you so much. Salamat din okay. po. I posted Salamat my email po. address in the chat box just in case uh, they would like to refer people for any psychosocial support or other Sige po. inquiries. Thank you. Yeah. And in my Please case, po, uh, kasi Thank kanina yung sa discussion, uh, sorry, yung sa discussion natin kanina, we, we focused on the COVID-19 crisis, no? But I also do counseling. So, if you have any concerns, no, uh, please feel free to message me. I ano, because I also give retreats, pala, no? So any any you know, any issue, pending personal, family, or whatever, no. <laughs> Wag lang financial, no? <laughs> So you can message me anytime. I'll be more than willing to guide you through and to journey with you. Okay. Thank you so much. Once again, thank you so much, Dr. Colin and Professor Thailand. We were able to post a link in the chat room, so you could copy that. And is there a question? Let us check. I think there's a question here for the students, ma'am. Do you have... Uh, there, uh, there's a question... Uh -oh. For Fina. From Ma'am Maria Cristina Abara. For the students, ma'am, do you have a webinar on psychosocial, on the psychosocial self? Well, I think that is for... If you are asking Iluilo Science and Technology University, then I think that question could be answered by our university president most probably there will be uh, future plans. But 
he can answer that for sure. Yeah, thank you for this uh, question. Uh, is that you is, uh, of course, uh, planning or activities like this. Uh, we have been uh, doing webinars and uh, requiring our faculty to attend uh, webinars. So we are still have a plan. Uh, Mom, Emily, and myself have been talking. What more can we do and share to our uh, fellow educators amidst this pandemic? So let's assure that this is just the first at this level series of webinars. Uh, if we are doing something for the faculty staff, we have to do also something for our students, who is very much affected by this pandemic. Just the pandemic. Uh, let's assure that uh, we will be sharing uh, whatever source of expertise we have at, in the university. This is the time for us to share. This is the time for us to, to give what we have to our fellow educators. Uh, we will be putting our uh, series of webinars to be conducted at the university. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Raul M. Uyong, for the clarification. We have here um, one post from Mam Ma Julieta Infante. She said that we are able to discover our very own potentials, which we don't mind. God has been so good to us to look back and to be more responsive. And from Mam Ma Rowena Isidro from La Paz. Uh, Isatio La Paz, thank you very much, Isatio and God Office, for this informative webinar. Any more questions or clarifications? Uh, from Mom Olive Joy Abing. Mom, most of the abuses now occurred at home. Students usually approach the teachers during these cases. During the pandemic, they have no one to turn to. Uh, do CHED and DepEd have any initiatives on the mental health of the students? Yeah, I, I don't know who, uh, to whom the question is directed. Uh, but anyway, mm -mm. I think uh, the various uh, institutions where the students are coming from or are enrolled can actually provide uh, you know, social support system for the students, especially universities and uh, even the uh, basic education institutions have guidance counselors with them. Tapos in terms of gender naman, may mga God structures tayo for each government institution, even the CHED, even SECs, even DepEd schools. So, uh, I don't think uh, there should be no problem with that. Uh, ang kailangan lang usually kasi may, uh, uh, may reporting system tayo, may pwede silang tawagan, hotline. And then just in case the school uh, will not be able to address talaga, and manage on their own yung kanilang uh, concerns, they could always uh, make referrals. Uh, may mga organizations tayo, volunteer free, uh, na pag offer ng mga services for psychosocial and even VAUSI cases, child abuse cases. The PNP has been very um, uh, accommodating and responsive to requests uh, and for reports, no? uh, they even get reports from fa their Facebook pages. So we can just uh, uh, look into the Facebook pages of uh, PNP or uh, for uh, yung sa gender related, yung gender uh, ombud natin meron din sila on CHR meron sila on and reporting in fairness may mga sistema naman for you. so we just make ourselves knowledgeable uh, and in the initiatives and yun yung pag form sa mga structures din sa ating mga universities all our schools are the ones na pinatras ng ating mga estudyante so hopefully they are accessible enough to be communicated to in kung sakaling may pangangailan thank you uh, let me just thank add you so much this. professor Taylan yeah, uh, I'd like to uh, uh, add something to what uh, Mom Faina shared with you. I'm sure uh, from the level no, ng CHED and DepEd, we already have some 
programs perhaps or plans to help our students. Uh, let me just share with you what we do in the uh, National Teacher Training Center for the Health Professions where I belong. Most of our students are frontliners you know, because we teach in the graduate school. You know, we teach doctors, nurses, and other medical professionals. So, mula kung nag-start ang pandemic na ito, we felt the need to constantly communicate with them. So, uh, we decided through the student council na every Friday, so ito yung hindi na sa level ng chair ng DepEd, pero siguro on your level, you, know, you can it's not times na nagkakatahan lang kami may times na tawag video kami or sana share kami ng some informative naman din like for example and then let me just quote so you know what we always look forward to Friday kasi yung one hour na to is our breather from the stressful hospital work minsan po nakikita namin sila nasa laboratory sila nakikita namin nasa mga clinic sila no so, sa kanila is really something very helpful well, of course, in the level of, uh, let's say, higher education, baka hindi naman ganun kaseryoso yung kanilang mga uh, issues, no? pero I'm sure meron. I don't know if you have heard that nowadays, there is an increase of uh, violence in the home na nangyayari. Kasi, syempre, tayo, we are all working parents, di ba? Hindi masyado natin kilala yung mga anak natin. Tapos biglang maghapon, kasama natin sila. Alam mo yun, we nag-adjust tayo sa, sa ugali ng bawat isa. So, may mga bagay na ayaw ng mga bata na panay natin ginagawa. Like, for example, imagine nakikita mo bawat kilos nila. O, bakit ganito? Bakit sasabi ng mga bata, bakit dati hindi naman ako napapansin? Bakit ngayon? Ganyan. And you know, it's causing them stress. Pero kung nag-organize kayo ng small group lang na, kunyari, barkadahan lang na, o, o sige, sige, magkumustahan tayo. At messenger lang kumustahin niyo sila. Ask them how they are. Paano sila nakakakop sa sitwasyon ngayon? Sa level lang ninyo. So, let's go to the most smallest na level. So, ito ay sa college ninyo or sa department ninyo. You can do that. On your own personal level, minsan may mga estudyante talaga mag-express, Mom, kausap, spend time with them si teacher, nakaka-spend ng time face-to-face. -face. Noong regular pa ang class, kanina, lalo tayong sa mga kababaihan, ay triple effort talaga. Kasi nagluluto ka na, nagwe-webinar ka pa, may meeting ka pa, may counseling ka pa. <laughs> Lahat yun. Kaya nga, let's capacitate ourselves. No? Yun. So let's not wait for CHED or for DepEd or even for the President no, to, to start it. On your level, you can do it. Yun lang po. No? Siguro naman with this AR thing and the uh, input that Ma'am Vina gave, medyo kakayanin niya yan. Basta meron kayo internet. <laughs> Yun. Okay? Thank you. Are there other questions po? Salamat, Ma'am Olive. <laughs> How can we? Kay Ma'am Fina, dapat yata yung tanong. <laughs> Sabi, uh, Ma'am, how can we integrate gender sensitivity with flexible learning? Nakamute ka, Fina. Thank 
host, please unmute me. Ah, host, please unmute me, Ma'am Fina. She okay. cannot. Okay. <laughs> I'm back. Rina, what po kami? We're back. Okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Colin, for that uh, pairing with our in readings. That's that wonderful initiative. So, you have given us an idea on how to somehow gather our students even if we don't see each other physically. So, you know, uh, Facebook, Zoom, Google Meet can all be um, a meeting place so that we can somehow hear whatever problems they have and somehow reach out to them. So, thank you so much for that. Okay, let's check if we have other questions yeah there's a question about integration of gender sensitivity with flexible learning okay so would you like to answer that po ma'am so, yes. uh, 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 i'm with the open universe now we are on uh, the campus in up which provides open distance e-learning uh, in the whole uh, system since 1995. So when we say flexible learning, it just means the combination of various uh, learning methods. It can be online, distance, print based, uh, mobile phone, can be uh, the use of TV and radio, anything uh, with the use of technology that should be flexible, meaning it should be responsive to the needs of students, even teachers, and even the institution. So when we talk about flexible learning or online distance learning, we usually talk about, for sure, you, you have been attending seminars na yung ating mga kasama sa higher education, uh, and even the basic education. May mga pillars ito and elements. So very important ang student support, institutional support, quality assurance. Uh, and yung use of technology, no? Uh, meron kami pinoprovide, ako personally, uh, kasi nagpoprovide kami ng orientation sa mga faculty namin on how to integrate gender sensitivity. So, very basic lang. Una, yung gamit ng gender responsive, uh, gender responsive or fair language in all the materials, learning materials, syllabus, course materials na gamit natin. So, we just have to make sure that uh, we know what gender responsive or gender fair language is and how uh, we can avoid it in uh, the development of Sabai and our course materials. Tangalua, you make it a point to um, raise gender issues in the discussion in the classroom, kites ang classroom pa yan, Google Classroom, Facebook Classroom, Google Meet, wherever, Zoom. So, kung ap whenever appropriate, we may need to raise gender issues sa mga uh, topics natin, kung kailan sila appropriate. Pangatlo, yung paggamit ng maayos na references, we just have to make sure na nagre-raise nga sila ng gender responsiveness at mga gender issues. So, may mga training tayo dyan on how we can uh, better uh, make our courses gender responsive. Very important lang yung part ng uh, sa flexible learning, yung making sure din na pinitake care natin yung ating mga teachers and even the learners. Kasi gano'n ang binanggit ko kanina, Usually, multiple burden na mga babae prior to pandemic and then more now. Uh, mas dumadami yung mga kailangan nilang concerns kasi ang daming changes na nangyayari. So, we just have to uh, uh, provide some changes within the home then na kailangan mas maayos yung work conditions natin. Kung merong mga work from home arrangements tayo, sana in pro with proper consultation with our learners and with our staff. Kasi ah, mas mahirap sa totoo lang ang distance learning, mas mahirap um, trabaho, work from home. Kasi ang daming distractions kanina, I, I just don't know if narinig nyo yung paharurot ng kapitbahay namin sa sasakyan. So yun, ang daming distractions. <laughs> Ako, kailangan ko dito sa sasakyan mag-work kasi ito yung uh, most silent, medyo mas malayo sa kids. So, uh, yun yung mga kailangan i-consider, no? Kasi ang dami-daming ganon, uh, ang alam ko, DepEd and even CHED nagbigay na ng mga memorandum na kailangan i-prioritize ang mga competencies na kailangan ito yung pinaka-workable, doable. Uh, pati nyo sa faculty, no? Kailangan na siguro nating mag-decide, uh, alin dito yung pwedeng i-let go mo ng mga reports. Dati-rati, ito yung requirements. Pero alin dito yung pinaka-doable na kasi kailangan meron tayong mabago sa system natin just to ensure na uh, yes, we are facilitating learning, we are facilitating work, pero 
we have to improve also yung mental health ng mga tao para naman hindi sobrang diba yung yung mas stress talaga tayo ma burnout tayo at ayun na ikaw yung stressor oo exactly oo ayun yun lang tapos syempre tayo bilang guro ito na discuss natin to ma'am Ems no sa dati nating webinar bilang mga guro and bilang mga administrator we have to be more responsive din sa needs ng ating mga estudyante part tayo no uh, provider ng student support kung medyo terror tayo ante no uh, face to face classes we just have to be more lenient and nga, choose kung ano yung priority competencies na pwede nating ma ma facilitate sa learning ng mga estudyante sa flexible learning kasi we are no we're not just teachers no we are facilitators of learning and also we are co-learners then no uh, hindi tayo lang yung master and uh, only uh, uh, who have monopoly over the subject matter pero mas facilitate tayo ng learning and we learn from our students also so basically we just have to make some adjustments also with the recent na nangyayari at mas maging responsive sa mga estudyante thank you and ano uh, just to add then <laughs> to what mam pina said no uh, let me just cite some examples. I don't know kung makaka-relate kayo dito. And it has something to do with what I um, earlier mentioned about reframing. Kasi tayong maguro and even administrators, meron na ka tayong mindset eh, na dapat ang estudyante ganito, dapat ganito yung competencies niya, dapat ganito yung output niya. And during this pandemic, no, with all ano naman, with all, ano ta, with all due respect, no, meron akong mga colleagues na, you know, they have a lot of time kasi na mag-check ng mga research paper, mga proposal, mga ganyan. And then, one of them told me, ano ba yan, mga estudyante to, wala na ang ginagawa sa bahay. Bakit hindi pa sila makapagsulat? Dapat ito na yung time na gamitin nila, ganito, ganyan, ganyan. E, sabi ko, ganyan po, sabi ko, ma'am, ano po, tama naman. No? Now, we expect them na since walang pasok, they are at home, makakapaggawa sila ng literature, makakapagsubmit sila ng proposal. But we have to understand na hindi lahat ng sitwasyon ay katulad natin sila. Ibig sabihin, hindi natin alam gaano kalaki ang bahay nila. Yung espasyo, baka they are not given the luxury to focus, to, to write. Samantalang yung, kunyari, isang teacher na ang malaki ang bahay, iba-ibang kwarto, so meron siyang sariling space to work, no? Para makafocus siya sa checking ng papers and all, no? So tama yung sinabi ni Ma'am Fina na, kayo din, let's try to reframe. Let's understand where they're coming from. Baka sila din mismo may pinagdadaanan. Like for example, yung aking advisee, no? Eh, I was expecting her to, ex to to submit her proposal. Then sabi niya, mom, pasensya na po kasi yung sister ko nasa New York, she's a nurse, and may exposure siya. So ngayon lahat kami worried. Alam mo yun? So you have to understand really where these people are coming from. And then from there, we try to adjust. No? Unawain natin kung ano yung pinagdadaanan ko nila. So let's go back to uh, how they call this, no? Talking ourselves, ano ba yung kailangan talaga? What are the essentials na dapat matutulong? Ma'am, isang maiksi lang. Proper consultation with our stakeholders would be very much help us to uh, redesign, redevelop our systems in terms of learning. Kung ano nararapat for particular uh, type of learner. Kaya flexible learning kasi hindi sweeping na pa sa lahat online, para sa lahat use of TV and radio, para sa lahat based. Pero you adjust whatever the situation calls for. So, yun. Consultation is necessary. Thank you. Okay. So, thank you so much, Professor Taylan and Dr. Dicol for all your inputs. Rest assured that those are well appreciated. And we will also look into the beliefs how we can try to integrate your recommendations in what we do in our respective schools. So we have one last question from Jessica Meraflos Henzo. Can the resource pair share a copy of their presentation? Sure, oh, sure. Yeah. Um, I will just send it to um, um, Yeah, we'll just have to send it to the organizers. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much yeah. once again, uh, Professor Thailand and Dr. Nicole. I wish we could give you a warm round of applause, but since we are in Zoom, let's do that virtually without the sound. 
So, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, that ends our open forum. Thank you so much for your active participation. I hope a lot of your questions have been clarified. Before the closing remarks, though, let me just remind everyone to type their name and school where you're affiliated to in chat room for your attendance so you may send you a digital certificate. Once again, we are requesting those who are here attending the webinar to type their full name and the school where they are affiliated to in the chat room so we can send you a digital certificate. So at this point, we will listen to the closing remarks of the Vice President for Administration and Finance of ESATU. Please all welcome Dr. Gabriel M. Salistre, Jr. Okay, uh, good noon. Uh, thank you, uh, Jessa, to our speakers, uh, noon and our recipient president. Uh, this uh, webinar that we had this morning uh, on empowering oneself to embracing the new normal is one of the initiatives and the uh, support of the university to uh, provide uh, our uh, faculty staff to be prepared in the coming uh, next year for uh, 2020. We believe that uh, we will be also frontliners with our students as we start with this new academic year. And we have a lot of challenges, a lot of uh, things to be prepared. Although this particular break that we have, we have also lined up different uh, activities, preparations for the uh, new mode of uh, instructions, the uh, flexible learning the, uh, that we will be conducting with our faculty. So I do believe that with the expertise, with the uh, input given to us by our uh, very uh, uh, expert, our, our expert this morning, we will be able to somehow uh, gain some insights in order that we will be more strengthened, we will be more empowered as we face and implement the new normal. Of course, I would like to thank the organizers, uh, the Office of the Gender and Development uh, Program of the University, the Office of the University President. Uh, Ma'am uh, Emily de la Cruz and our God Focal Person for initiating this uh, particular activity with the support of our university president, of course. And I would like also to thank our participants, uh, more than 350 participants uh, registered in this particular activity we have this morning. Thank you for being with us and we hope that uh, we will be able to implement and we will be able to uh, encourage ourselves as we go on with this particular challenges as we face the new in our respective institutions. We would like to acknowledge and uh, thank the participation of colleagues from other universities, uh, particularly mentioned our uh, president from the Guimara State uh, College, uh, Sir Artaho, thank you for joining us. And of course, some uh, colleagues from uh, other institutions as well as the Department of Education. So once again, thank you for being us and thank you for uh, active participation of everyone, particularly to our resource speaker, Ma Professor uh, Thailan and Dr. Nicolette. Thank you and uh, good noon. Thank you so much, Dr. Salistre. Thank you, Dr. Everyone, we are requesting you to turn on your videos for our class teacher. Okay, please look at the camera. Smile. Uh, we will have we will take a screen cap of our panel screen cap of our panel please turn on your videos and look straight to the camera please and smile sir baltazar defal uh defaloma Please turn on your video. We are still waiting for other participants to turn on their videos.
Okay, they say patience is a virtue. Let's practice that at the moment. Smile. Oh, see, napatawa ko kayo. Is ni Dr. Cohen, appreciate. Stay positive. There's no video coming out from Mom Janice. Ah, it's there. Okay, so almost everyone has their video. Okay, let's wait for a while. Keep on smiling. So thank you so much for smiling for everyone. Uh, once again, I would like to thank Dr. Raul Emuyo and others. Stay safe, everyone. May God bless us all. This has been your moderator, Jesus and Apone, signing off.
If there are no participants anymore who will be writing their names in the chat room, we will already end the webinar. Thank you.